In this video, I'll show you how to get started with editing in the lab color format, which behaves differently to the typical RGB format that remains the default for the majority of image editing workflows. First, let's cover best practices when converting to lab. It's advantageous to start with a RAW file. This is because we can process to a wide color space in RGB before converting to lab. Here with this RAW image, I'll enable the Profiles option and change the output profile from sRGB to ROM RGB. ROM RGB ships with Affinity Photo and is an equivalent to the ProPhoto RGB profile. Although this is not particularly necessary for the majority of images, from a technical standpoint, developing to a wider color space, such as ROM RGB, will ensure that we do not inadvertently clip any intense color values that may be present in the image. Lab inherently has a huge color gamut, significantly larger than any typical RGB or CMYK color space. So we will want to maximize the color information we carry across to Lab when converting from RGB. I'll leave all the other settings as they are and click Develop. Now that we have our RGB document, it's time to convert it to Lab. We can do this by going to Document, Convert Format slash ICC Profile, and I'll change the color format here to Lab 16. There is only a D50 profile to choose from here, so I'll click Convert. There is no immediate change in the rendering of the image, but internally, all the color values have been converted from RGB to Lab. So in terms of advantages of Lab editing, let's begin with the most straightforward, which is being able to modify lightness independently of color intensity. I'll add a curves adjustment using Command M on Mac, Control M on Windows. And if I click the channel target here, I now have a choice of Master, Lightness, A Opponent, B Opponent, and Alpha. Lab is very different compared to RGB and CMYK, which are additive and subtractive color models, respectively. It works on an opponent color model. The lightness channel represents perceptual lightness, whereas A opponent is formed of the oppositional pair of red and green colors, and B opponent is formed of blue and yellow colors. One of the key advantages of separating lightness from color is that we can easily alter the perceptual lightness of an image without reducing or increasing color intensity. Here, for example, I'll click drag to add a few nodes to this spline graph in order to increase the contrast of the lightness channel information. To demonstrate how this differs to editing in RGB, I'll load in a separate copy of that same RAW file, set the color profile to ROM RGB, and click Develop, but this time I'll add a curves adjustment in RGB and create a similar graph to the lab version I'm working on. Now, if I move back to the lab version, notice the difference in color intensity. With the lab version, I have avoided oversaturating the color detail, and I have that flexibility to make color based editing decisions separately. Now back on the RGB version of the document, Affinity Photo does have a luminosity blend mode that we could change this curves adjustment to. This is a weighted grayscale calculation of the RGB channel information, and it does help slightly in terms of avoiding excessive color saturation, but it's not the same as working on lightness independently in lab. We can see this if I switch back to the lab version and compare. Manipulating lightness results in a different rendition of contrast, especially between foreground and background detail. Let's look at color manipulation. To keep things separate, I'll add a second curves adjustment and move across to the B opponent channel. As mentioned previously, Lab has a huge color gamut, and this is reflected in the distribution of color tones on the graph. There is roughly a quarter of unused space each side. Color modifications are very sensitive in Lab. To help with this, you can employ the picker, then click drag on a color in the image you wish to modify. I'll drag down on the green color here. This very quickly introduces a noticeable blue color cast. I could then click drag on the graph line to add a couple of additional nodes and bring the rest of the line back to its default position. Even with this relatively small modification to the middle of the graph, we'll see if I temporarily hide 
the curves adjustment that this still results in a strong tonal change. Across on the A opponent channel, I might also make a small change, where I'll add a node in the center of the graph, then add another node further up, and just bring it down slightly. This has a subtle effect on the darker tones, where those are being increased slightly, and this has reduced the intensity of the reds and reduced the yellow color cast as well. Again, because this is quite sensitive, I may have gone slightly too far, so I can easily adjust this and fine tune it until I get the look I am after. Because of the sensitivity of adjusting channel information in lab, using a levels adjustment can help with this. On the B opponent channel, I can achieve two distinct effects by manipulating the black and white levels. Bringing the black level in will produce a blue color cast, and then bringing the white level in will produce a yellow color cast. The overall effect of the levels adjustment can be controlled by changing its opacity. If I liked the effect but felt it was perhaps too strong, I could try an opacity of 50%, for example. Using a channel mixer adjustment is also a good way of exploring what Lab can offer. I'll add this adjustment by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Channel Mixer. On the Lightness channel, I can experiment with contributing to lightness from the color channels. For example, I'll increase B opponent and decrease A opponent. If I quickly hide this adjustment, we can appreciate the effect it has. When I show it again, we'll notice the tassels on the balloons become brighter, and there is more separation and contrast between the different colors on the sign. In fact, if we wanted to take advantage of this functionality in the curves, levels, and channel mixer adjustments, we don't even need to explicitly convert our documents from RGB to lab. I'll open up this document I've been working on by click-dragging and letting go of the mouse button over the top toolbar. This will open it as a separate document with its own tab. A very popular technique with lab is the gold color effect, typically used to give foliage a rich red-yellow appearance. Without converting the document to lab, I'll add a channel mixer adjustment. Then I'll change the color model here from RGB to lab. This does a quick conversion from RGB to lab and back again, which can affect performance, but it is a useful technique to be aware of if you are already working on a layered RGB document and cannot easily convert to lab. On the lightness channel, I'll reduce lightness contribution to 0% and increase B opponent contribution to 100%. Then, on the A opponent channel, I'll reduce A opponent contribution to 0%, and increase B opponent contribution to 100%. Now I can close the adjustment dialog, and on the layers panel, change the channel mixer's blend mode to hard light. The initial effect is quite strong, so I can reduce the layer opacity. Instead of using the opacity slider here, I can simply type my new desired opacity in as long as the layer is selected. I'll type 55, for example, to set the opacity to 55%. This warms the image up nicely and creates some rich color tones. This is a non destructive procedure, so I can hide and then show the channel mixer adjustment to reveal the before and after. One final example then, again with a document that is in RGB. I'll add a channel mixer adjustment and switch the color model to lab. Here on the lightness channel, I'll increase the B opponent contribution to 100% and decrease the A opponent contribution to minus 100%. To show this effect clearly, I'll quickly hide the channel mixer adjustment and then show it again. Subtracting A opponent and adding B opponent to the lightness information strengthens the contrast in a very natural and pleasing way. In addition to this, I'll add a curves adjustment and once again switch the color model to lab. Then I'll move across to the B opponent channel and I'll create an S shape curve on the graph. 
Hiding this curves adjustment, then showing it again, reveals that it has created a stylized color cast, blending blue to the darker tones and yellow to the lighter tones. There are a plethora of possibilities when manipulating tones in the lab color space. It lends itself equally well to both subtle, realistic tonal changes and more extravagant, stylistic effects that still manage to remain natural and balanced. I would encourage experimenting with the curves, levels, and channel mixer adjustments in lab. Explicitly converting a document to lab will improve performance when rendering these adjustments, but you can still apply them to an RGB or CMYK document as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.